All right, before we get started in installing our 6250HX into our Fusion 480, which we have on the table here from Blade, awesome helicopter that we have the 550 stretch kit on, it is important that you know that you're gonna need a couple of tools. First off, I would recommend getting a pitch gauge. A digital pitch gauge is always nice. I picked this one up online for super cheap. I would implore you guys to get one. As well as for when we're mounting the 6250HX, it's good to have a little bubble level like I have here. Additionally, you may want to have some extra sticky tape. It does come with a couple of pads of sticky tape, double-sided tape, but it's always good to have a little extra. I'm gonna be using those to install the receivers. Another important thing to note is that we're assuming that you have already put together your flybarless helicopter. Like our Fusion 480, follow the instructions in the manual for your helicopter of choice to set up and build the model. And then if it has any recommended settings for your transmitter, go ahead and put those in your transmitter now. We are gonna be going over a little bit of the transmitter setup just in reference to the 6250HX in one of the next steps. Let's jump down to the bench and see how to install the 6250HX. All right guys, we're down here at the bench and we're gonna go ahead and install the 6250HX and the receiver and an additional receiver, which is our SPM 9745 that we have here onto my Fusion 480 stretch with the 550 stretch kit on it. Um, again, we do implore you that you set up your helicopter per the manual. So if you're using a different manufacturer's helicopter, not the Fusion 480 like we have in this video, make sure that you have it assembled and set up per the manual specifications. All right, so let's get the canopy off. Okay. So as you may see, I already have all my servo wires run and I have another wire for my separate receiver. Another great uh, companion for the 6250HX setup, of course, is to have the manual on hand. The 6250HX comes with a couple of these extra pads that are specifically cut for the 6250HX. It is important when you are mounting it that you have it so that the to make sure that the top of this is flat with the rotor disc. Make sure that the plane that is facing the rotor disc is as parallel to the rotor disc as possible, like that. So, and that means that the any side, so let's say we mount it on its side like this. I'm not going to do that, but let's just say I do. Make sure that when you mount it that way, that the top of the, the plane of the 52HX that's towards the rotor disc is flat. Now with most, manufa most manufacturers, that should be the case. Normally they have, like we have here, a little plate for your receiver or your flight controller to mount onto, but who knows? You may have one that's custom made or you have it a little different where it mounts on the side or something like that. Just make sure that it is, like I said, parallel with the rotor disc. Another important thing to take note is to obviously use our double-sided tape. The included tape, it is specifically chosen for this system so that you're not playing around and getting a whole bunch of weird oscillations. It helps dampen vibration from the rest of the helicopter. So that's what you wanna use. It does come with an extra one. So if you are mounting this onto a nitro helicopter and you want a little extra dampening, you could use the extra one. It's up to you and I'm going to mount it just like this. For the best attitude estimation, make sure it's right in the middle. Don't kind of offset it at all. Try to get it right down the middle of the helicopter. So, and it's important that we do not plug in our servos yet. That's because we have to do some servo setup. We have to tell the flight controller what type of servos we're using before it'll even initialize. So I personally am using the H6050 Spectrum servos on the head and an H6360 Brussels servo on the tail. Good to know. So we have that mounted. Let's go ahead and, and mount our receiver. So like I said, this comes with the latest Spectrum telemetry remote receiver. This is the SPM4651T. Has a couple of antennas that are gonna come off of it like that, but I'm also going to mount this one onto it. We're gonna put this guy on our left side of our heli. We're gonna use this wire here. It has a four pin connector, 
There's only three wires, but it is a four pin connector that's gonna go into this end on the receiver, like that. And then the other end is gonna go into the Bind Prog RX2 port, this number one port right here. Make sure that the signal is up. So I'm just gonna feed it through our channel here and plug it straight into that port. And then, like I said, I'm gonna use some of my double-sided tape that I grabbed to mount our receiver, right? Yep. So I'm gonna mount my receiver right here, like that. And it's always important to make sure that your antennas are not laying against the carbon. And you can, I like how these antennas, they're a little, you can kind of position them so you can kind of bend them. Don't tug on them, but kind of bend them out of the way so that they are away from the carbon, like so. Pretty simple. The 6250HX does come with some extra stuff. You get stickers and some extra padding, like I said. This is a cable for updating the receiver. So if you happen to have to update the receiver, you unplug this guy, plug this one in, like so, and then you plug in the update cable. But we're not covering that. I'm just letting you know. I'm gonna mount this on the other side. So let's turn it around. And like I said, I have this already routed. So this is our remote receiver wire. And this one, just like the other one, has kind of a, a, an antenna that can be bent and, and it'll hold its shape as best as possible. Grab my other piece of double-sided tape, put it on the back of our receiver. And then I'll choose a location for it. Plug it in. How about, now? Well, let's not go towards the gear. How about like that? That should be good. Right there, okay. Now we have that. We will plug in the other end of the remote receiver. So the other, the first receiver, the main receiver goes into RX2, the bind prog port there. The other receiver is gonna go into the RX1 port. The RX2 port here is shared with this port as well. So you can't have three remote receivers, you can only have two which is adequate for up to 700 size helicopters, as long as your antenna placement is good. So we're gonna plug that in there. Now you do need an SRXL2 remote receiver, like we had, that comes with it, luckily it comes with it, to program the flight controller because you need a telemetry capable receiver for forward programming. Keep that in mind. So if you guys get something like this second hand and you're trying to set it up, make sure you have the receiver that comes with it. All right, so that is it for how we install. Let's move on to binding the receivers. Okay, so if we want to bind the receiver, obviously we're going to have to apply power. What I'm going to do is I'm just gonna find one of my ESC wires. I am using the Spectrum Avian 100 amp ESC on this build. That's important to note. And it does have two wires. It has an extra BEC wire. I'm going to just go ahead and plug that into an open port. Not worried about setting up throttle yet. We're just binding. So we got that plugged in. I'm gonna take my battery here. And I'm going to plug it into our ESC. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to bind one receiver at a time because this one has a bind button on it. So we're gonna press the bind button. It's gonna start blinking. I'm gonna grab our IX20 model. I'm gonna hit bind. We're gonna hold bind here. Now, just so you guys know, I do have my pinion gear slipped away from the main drive. So if I do accidentally hit throttle, it's not gonna throttle up on us. Safety first. All right, so we're bound to the main receiver, but we'll go ahead and flip it over and I'll show you guys that the other receiver is not bound. So how do we bind that? We gotta do kind of a two-step binding here. That is done. Let's go ahead and unplug our battery. Get this out of the way. Focus on here. That is done using a bind plug. So we're gonna unplug the main receiver on this side. So that's the first receiver. Plug in the bind plug. 
plug in our battery. And there you go. Now our other receiver is blinking. Once again, take our IX20. Let's lay her down. You guys can see that. Let's take our IX20. I need to zoom out a little bit. So let's go ahead and bind to the second receiver. So both of these receivers, some people might think, well, how you can you bind two receivers to the same model memory? That's exactly how it works, is that both receivers recognize the same model memory and they'll bind to it. So that's good to know. We're gonna hit bind. And just to show you guys how it's all working, now that we have both of those bound, I'll unplug my bind plug, plug in my main receiver, like so. And you'll see that both receivers are now bound. And that's how you bind.